sorry, both the aileron um, servos are mounted outboard of the frame and they're pretty well evenly spaced and the arms are almost on the same axis, the actual pivot of the... Here's another view showing the, uh, the starboard servo positioned. You can also see that the bracket is just right angle. It's about 2mm aluminum and you can obtain this from Home Depot, B&Q, whatever. They seem to have little pots of these things around for finishing trims and so on. This stuff has a nice silver finish which obviously I've now um, painted black. And you can see it's held on to the frame by two screws diagonally across the base of the, uh, the section that bolts onto the frame. To create these brackets is really very simple because all you need is a file, uh, preferably a grindstone or a grind wheel. And as you can see then you just um, you cut off a chunk of the right angle aluminum, uh, mark up where the servo needs to go, uh, allowing enough room for that servo horn to not quite touch the inside, which brings it vertically below the other course. It's very plate. simple to just grind it down to slightly undersize and then you can open it up to the exactly the size of the servo with a, an ordinary file. Don't forget you mustn't make it too long, otherwise you're going to be interfering with where the screws, the fitting screws for the servos go. Here's a slightly closer view of the, uh, the port servo. Again you can see the angle of the servo horn and you can see the, uh, the drop rod to the swash plate. In this position you can also see it is slightly off of directly perpendicular, but so little as to not be worth bothering about. I could probably have moved that servo in a little bit more, but frankly don't feel it's worthwhile the, uh, removing it all slightly uh, further away. Look so you can see the angle of the horns, and the next shot will show you actually in operation. Okay, now everything's connected up, the TX is on, and we are in normal mode, we do not have idle up on, the motor is disconnected of course. So we're now going to full throttle in normal mode, full collective, and back down to minimum collective. Now we'll switch the idle up on, down we go to full bottom, moving up, up to full pitch with idle up on. So you can see the movements there, the uh, paddle is just getting in the way. I bring up the microcontroller as well, so we have even more on there. So there's the full throw. So the horns are well positioned, going across their middle position on the full collective movement. And that's how simple it throws up of the, uh, the port bracket for the servo, sitting right behind my particular canopy rod, which actually I've moved forward because I've modified the canopy on the helicopter as well. So normally, of course, your canopy rod would be behind these, but the canopies should still fit over the servo. Yeah. This is the starboard servo mounting. This one actually held on with three screws onto the, uh, the belt's frame. But this one you have to be a little more careful because I haven't done the pitch control servo modification. So you have to arrange this one so that you have full movement of that cantilever arm. Otherwise, of course, you're going to block the throttle and the pitch control. And to complete this short video, here's the view from the front of the chopper, showing the two servos mounted outboard of the frame and giving me a really nice direct connection between the servo horns and the swash plate on the belt CP.